bush where pop up behind. Quite impressed with that, that's the first time I've used one of these. Coming up in tonight's episode, I'm out at the farmer's residence trying to rid the place of the pesky grey squirrels that keep chewing through his feeders. He's also asked me if I can nail the resident jay that keeps taking songbirds. This is Team Foxer. So here I am on a mission at the farmer's own residence to try and rid the area of some of the grey squirrels. They keep chewing through his feeders like that one there and also the feeders that are in the chicken pens as well. Those are the last two there. So uh, kind of fine tuned it. It's not a bad little grouping I suppose. So. Should be perfectly good enough for headshot squirrels and maybe the old bonus jay but this is a little bit further and I would normally shoot for it. We'll get the camcorder set up and see how we get on. So as I get settled in the pop-up hide, just a note to make sure that you tune in next time as well because I've been back to my favourite squirrel location and got some great footage and had a very good morning in much, much better conditions. Back to today's action and it's not long, I've probably been in the hide for around 20 minutes when I noticed the first customer of the session. This little fatty here looks like he's been eating all of the grain pies. It's about time we served him his eviction notice. Well there you go, that's number one on the deck. Only been in situ, probably not even 20 minutes. I took a couple of sighting rounds on the box because this is a bit further than the usual squirrel shooting um, places that I've had before. So um, this is almost 35 yards. So I've upped the power of the air arms and adjusted the crosshairs accordingly. It's pretty terrible conditions really. Um, not a breath of wind, very foggy. You can hear the moisture dropping all around us but nevertheless as you know it's always great to be out yesterday I was in that there Yorkshire we're not in Kansas anymore Dorothy trees and hills pheasant shooting with my new shotgun I treated myself for Christmas uh, so I traded in the Beretta I've bought myself a Blaser F16 very nice it is too. I'm on a bit of a time constraint this morning. I have been told in no uncertain terms to make sure I'm back before lunchtime because we've got shopping to do. You all know how much I love shopping. As I patiently wait for the squirrel to come to the feeder, I keep getting glances of the jay the farmer was talking about. He's got nesting boxes in and around the yard and has had a noticeable drop in songbirds uh, over the past year or so. Uh, and he's witnessed the jay actually stealing uh, eggs from the uh, bird's nest. And there you can see probably uh, one of the culprits. I think I believe there are actually two. Um, and it is perfectly legal to take these birds um, to protect wild uh, songbirds, especially if you, you, you know, you're trying to do what's right for them. So if I get the chance at that jay, I'm going to take it. For now though, um, the primary purpose of this session is to reduce the grey squirrel numbers. This particular squirrel was very fidgety. Although he's on the feed there, his head was permanently moving and I want to try and make the kills as humane as possible. 
So we're just about when I think he's staying still enough, just like here, about to take the shot and again he fidgets back up to the top. So I think actually now he's free enough to be able to, or still enough, sorry, to be able to take the shot. So I'll take aim and squeeze one off. He clearly appreciated my patience there as he gave me a little wave. The same shot now from a slightly wider field of view shows just how many birds disperse as soon as I take the shot. But what it also goes to show is just how much wildlife benefits from shooting. It is something that often gets my gripe that people bang on about hunters always being bloodthirsty and the reality is so much more wildlife benefits from shooting than otherwise possibly would, especially during the winter months. Within minutes, squirrel number three makes his way to the feeder. Although this one, unlike a lot of the other squirrels that morning, decided on a slightly longer winded route. I found it quite fascinating how this squirrel decides to go up the adjacent tree and go way above the feeder to come across just to get onto it. I'm not too sure if it was maybe his first or second time dining um, at Team Fox's restaurant, but I'm pretty certain there are faster and more direct ways of getting there. I did notice here that there was movement on the floor from the squirrel I just shot as soon as this one went down. So as soon as I dispatched squirrel number three, I broke cover and went to retrieve them. It, the squirrel uh, previously shot to this one did require uh, another round to finish it off. Well, three's a crowd. I was actually watching the jay moving around when I saw squirrel number three come across the floor uh, and then up to the feeder. The jay actually came and sat in the tree right in front of me but it was just too high here. I do hope he makes a return because there are a lot of songbirds around the feeder now and I'm going to keep that fed all winter just to give them a nice fighting chance so we've got a healthy population of songbirds. Um, into the spring and summer next year. I say, we crack open the flask and have a nice cup of English tea. What do you reckon? Those that might have been watching for some time will know I don't usually have good form when it comes to flasks, but what you can see here, this one's got a sizeable dent in the lid. I always drop them. Don't know why. Sod's law says, and it's just like fishing, as soon as you pick up your pack up or your sandwich or your cup of tea, you get a bite, or in this case, you get a grey menace come to the feeder. I patiently waited for him to take a nut and then settle down, but he seemed quite settled just at the side of the feeder and his head was down, giving me plenty of target area to put one straight into the brain box. Incidentally, my neck scarf here, which is a real soft, flexible lycra style fabric, keeps your neck and chin ever so warm. You can get these from the Teespring shops, so I'll put a link to that in the video's description. Even on a cold, damp, wet morning where the action isn't quite as fast paced as one would have hoped, you could still enjoy the day as I did watching this blackbird turn over a few leaves to find his breakfast. I also managed to capture very briefly on film a spotted woodpecker coming to the feeder and benefiting from the nuts that I would leave there throughout the winter. 
It's roughly an hour later before the next squirrel comes into view. I just finished filming the segment there of me talking about my face mask when I spun the camera around because I noticed a grey squirrel coming to the feeder. Now judging from the reaction of that squirrel there, I would suggest that wasn't a clean kill. And you can see here on the slow-mo replay as I pull the trigger, the crosshair just wanders high and right. And I'm pretty confident the pellet there grazed the upper part of the skull. It was enough to probably concuss the squirrel, but it wasn't a clean dispatch. So I've left this clip in to show you that sometimes things don't always go to plan. So I had no choice once again to break cover to see if I could go over and retrieve it. There's the three, there's the three we prepared earlier. So I go over with my rifle just in case um, I come across it clearly and it still needs to be dispatched. I spent several minutes walking around trying to find a squirrel but I could only conclude that it must have scurried right in the really thick undergrowth or indeed up a tree. So. Uh, and I hadn't brought my thermal spotter with me, unfortunately, that day. I'd not long been back in the hide when squirrel number four or number five, whichever way you look at it, came along and was duly dispatched. That one taking a fancy cartwheel off and was a lot more convincing. As my curfew is fast approaching, I start to think about packing away when I capture sight of both the jay and the squirrel coming to the feeder. It would probably be a case of which one came into the crosshair first. Well, we shall see. just about to pull the trigger there when it flies up into the branches above the feeder it's almost as if this jay knows it's on candid camera Well, its look finally runs out as I put it down with a perfectly placed chest shot. Right, so yeah, a little bushware pop-up hide. It's quite good. First time I've used one of those. So we should have three more squirrels and a jay to collect from here. One, two, and I can see the J. Pretty sure where the other squirrel is. It's thrashed itself around somewhere, so we best have a little look for that. Well, thank you very much for watching. It was a short, sharp session here on the farm on what has been a quite wet, foggy 
morning. Nevertheless, I've been able to account for several grey squirrels and I've got my bonus jay. The feeder on the other farm is going down uh, pretty rapidly, so I will be getting out on that one fairly soon. So there will be some more squirrel action coming up on the channel. If you like this type of content and you're stopping by for the first time and you want to, please consider subscribing. But for now, take care, stay safe, and as always, happy shooting.